Today I'm going to show you how to use DaVinci Resolve on your iPad Pro. Now this is coming from a comment on one of my previous tutorials which I've done this for Final Cut Pro and Premiere. You can check them out up here after this video and somebody commented asking if this works with DaVinci Resolve and the answer is yes. So if you're not familiar with this program, it's actually made by the company Blackmagic Design which of course makes cinema cameras as well. And it's known for having like super sophisticated color editing and styling capabilities. Not only that, but it has a pretty good timeline for editing and what I, as a student, think is absolutely amazing about this is it's free to use for the most basic version which gives you pretty much anything you need. If you want the super complex features which can do some pretty advanced like animations and things, that costs more money, but just what I'm going to be showing you today is completely free. I should note, as with all of my videos, this is not sponsored by anyone, so if you could hit a like on this video that would help me out very much. Now for what you're going to need, you're going to need a MacBook Pro. This is the 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro, and over here is the 11 inch original iPad Pro. Now for software on the Mac, I'm running macOS Catalina version 10.15.5 beta, and over here on the iPad, it's iPadOS 13.5. The most important part here is both of these have to be at the most up-to-date software for this feature to work. Alright, so over here on the Mac, once you have DaVinci Resolve downloaded, which once again, it is free, you're going to open up the program, get your timeline all set, and then you're going to go up to the AirPlay icon, click on that, and then connect to your iPad. Once you hit that, it's going to take a second, and boom, it shows up on your iPad. So now you have the capability to do all of your color editing and effects and stuff like that that you normally do on your laptop or even your desktop computer. You can now do that on your iPad. So they've actually continued to evolve this sidecar feature since it originally came out because originally I was not able to use my keyboard folio, which was kind of disappointing. I could only use the Apple Pencil and it was a little clunky, you know, when you're typing and stuff like that. You're now able to use the keyboard folio so you can just like play and pause the video and uh, do all of your normal keyboard shortcuts that you would do on your computer. You can even use the arrow keys to move frame by frame, which is really great for precise editing. Now I've got the color window pulled up because you can do some pretty awesome stuff. So if you're not familiar with this program, um, how their color editing works is you can actually do nodes and it creates this like flow chart, which I think is pretty fascinating, which neither Premiere nor Final Cut lays out their color editing like this. And I think it makes it just super clean and easy to understand. All right, so I've got six nodes here, and the first one generally is your basic correction to get you to the basic level, and then the nodes after that is to stylize and give your video a certain look. There are some really great tutorials that will show you an in-depth look at this whole color editing process in DaVinci Resolve, but this is just a basic overview. So in the bottom left, we have our color wheels. We're gonna use our Apple Pencil to uh, tweak them slightly. You'll see on the right, I have pulled up the scopes, so we're gonna want to make sure that everything is in the range. We can change our highlights here, midtones, and shadows. Now something I should note is that when you're doing this more complex color editing like this, it's really important that the monitor that you're looking at the image on is calibrated, which the iPad Pro as itself has a pretty good color rendition. And also nowadays, most people are watching videos such as this on an iPad or an iPhone. So you're gonna be directly looking at the image, how it will be displayed when most people are going to be watching it. Alternatively, what you could also do is connect an external monitor to your MacBook Pro, probably USB-C or could even just be HDMI to a very highly calibrated monitor and then you just have your external image, the image that you're outputting, you put that on there and then you use your Apple Pencil and the iPad to use these very intuitive controls where you're doing that all in the iPad, it's all touchscreen, lovely, and then you're looking at it on a calibrated monitor. Anyways, I think that's just pretty cool. Alright, so now back to the iPad. Once we have completed our basic corrections to get it to a very sort of neutral look, we're going to move on to our next mode and start doing a little more fun. So you can adjust the colors of just certain regions or just the highlights, midtones, shadows. 
You can add a point to the curves graph here and uh, adjust it any way you want. You will have even more control if you do shoot in RAW, but this was just shot um, in the normal MOV format, so you have quite a bit of play, um, but not quite as much as if you were shooting in RAW. Another great feature, if you make a little boo-boo, you can just do Command-Z on your keyboard folio and it will undo what you just did. So uh, yeah, this is how you edit with the complete free version, but it is very, very complete. The desktop version of DaVinci Resolve on your iPad Pro with literally zero limitations. I'm gonna have so much fun playing with this because you can just like sit back on the couch on the bed, take your iPad, do some color editing, and yeah, it just kind of takes the work out of doing something like this, which also if you get really good at color editing and stuff like this, um, people charge a lot to do this type of thing, so you can make a lot of money. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you wanna watch my tutorials on how to do this with Final Cut Pro or Premiere, the links are up there or in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you wanna watch more filmmaking content like this. That's it for now, thank you all for watching, and as always, don't forget to keep it pro.